Hidden Repression, How the IMF and World Bank Sell Exploitation as Development, by Alex Gladstein, is a critical examination of the roles of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank in the global economic landscape, particularly in relation to the impact they have on developing countries. Gladstein argues that, contrary to their public image as benevolent proponents of development and poverty reduction, these institutions often perpetuate economic disparity and exploitation through the policies and programs they promote. Gladstein introduces the origins of both the IMF and the World Bank, which were created during the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944. Their initial purpose was to stabilize the post-war global economy, with the IMF tasked with ensuring exchange rate stability and providing short-term financial assistance to countries experiencing balance of payments difficulties, and the World Bank with providing long-term loans for recovering European economies and later for development projects in poorer nations. The author then delves into the historical evolution of these institutions, detailing how their roles have significantly expanded over decades. Gladstein emphasizes that, despite good intentions, the IMF and World Bank have become powerful tools for implementing neoliberal economic policies that prioritize market liberalization, privatization, and austerity measures, a set of prescriptions often referred to as the Washington Consensus. One of the book's central themes is the critique of structural adjustment programs, SAPs. The IMF and World Bank prescribed these programs to developing countries in the 1980s and 1990s, a period of significant debt crises. The SAPs, designed to make economies more efficient and competitive, mandated deep cuts to public spending, deregulation, and the privatization of state-owned enterprises. Gladstein argues that, in practice, these policies often led to weakened social safety nets, worsened living conditions for the poor, and exacerbated inequality. Gladstein uses case studies to illustrate the detrimental effects of these policies. In Africa, where many countries have been subject to SAPs, the author presents evidence that these policies undermined domestic agriculture, local industries, and social services, which in turn led to increased poverty and social unrest. Additionally, the privatization of natural resources often resulted in foreign corporations benefiting from Africa's wealth, leaving local populations with little to show for their country's resources. The book also addresses the impact of debt and how the IMF and World Bank's loan conditions effectively compromise the sovereignty of borrowing nations. Gladstein explains how high levels of debt serve as a mechanism for control, forcing countries to prioritize debt repayment over social spending, resulting in ongoing cycles of poverty and underinvestment in essential services like health care and education. Furthermore, Gladstein sheds light on the political dimensions of the IMF and World Angels Bank's influence. It is argued that many times, financial assistance is used as leverage to support regimes that are aligned with the economic interests of powerful member states rather than prioritizing the well-being of the local population. This patron-client relationship is said to perpetuate corruption and authoritarianism in recipient countries, with little accountability for the actions of ruling elites. In relation to environmental concerns, Gladstein is critical of the fact that many World Bank-funded projects have led to environmental degradation and the displacement of local communities. Large-scale infrastructure projects, such as dams and mining operations, are scrutinized for their social and ecological impacts, with the author suggesting alternate frameworks that place a greater emphasis on sustainability and the rights of indigenous peoples. The author also examines the response to criticism and reform within the IMF and World Bank. Both institutions have, over time, introduced new policies and initiatives aimed at addressing the negative outcomes associated with their interventions. These include efforts to incorporate poverty reduction strategies, improve debt relief mechanisms, and embrace a more nuanced understanding of development. Gladstein, however, remains skeptical about the depth and effectiveness of these reforms, suggesting that they often fall short of addressing the underlying issues of inequity and power imbalances. An important segment of the book discusses the emergence of alternative development models and financing options for developing countries. With the rise of new economic partners such as China, 
which offers a different approach to development finance through its Belt and Road Initiative, some nations now have options beyond the Washington Consensus. Gladstein discusses the implications of these alternatives, contemplating whether they present genuine opportunities for development or whether they merely replicate exploitative patterns under the guise of solidarity. In the conclusion of the book, Gladstein advocates for a fundamental shift in how global economic institutions engage with developing countries. He calls for greater transparency and democratization in decision-making processes, local empowerment, and the prioritization of human rights and environmental standards. The author also emphasizes the importance of international solidarity and a multipolar world where no single nation or institution holds a disproportionate amount of power. Hidden repression ultimately offers a potent critique of the dominant development paradigm as exemplified by the IMF and World Bank. Through careful analysis and numerous case studies, Alex Gladstein challenges readers to rethink the prevailing narratives about these influential institutions, questioning the true costs and beneficiaries of their approach to global economic governance. The book serves as both a historical account and a call to action, urging a reevaluation of the mechanisms through which development is pursued and measured. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.